Testing, testing, one, two, three. We are live. We are live. We are live. Shout out to all the early birds and me for being late. Uh, go ahead and put your aliens in the chat if you can hear me. And you know the drill. We're about to get started in just a minute. Get ready, because you're about to be an ATL. That's not being a blogger. More than a blogger. That's not being a blogger. You are more than I am more than That's not being a blogger. I'm my son. Okay, this shit is okay. I am more than a blog. In the blog got it. In the blog got it. In the blog got it. The sheriff's yeah, yeah, yeah. In the blog got it. in the room hey y'all we are kind of early today <laughs> i'm late because i promised my instagram people that i was gonna be here at four and i'm out of breath because i had ran down here and stuff hey y'all come on in come on in come on in what's up squad hey jafira jafia i see you i see you what did monique do today <laughs> y'all know monique is gonna be a trendy topic for the next month or so child every day is gonna be something different because everybody's breaking down this three-hour interview um, so, you know, we're going to talk about it, but come on in. Let me greet my people. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see who came in here. Benita. Hey, Benita. Thank you so much for the early super sticker. I see you. I see you. Um, uh, John John was in here first and Cheryl, I see y'all. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Not the emergency live. No, it's not an emergency. It's not an emergency, but I did add some people to the agenda. Okay, I did add some people to the agenda. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Look, but before I get started, this thing is heavy. Oh, I don't know if this is 20 pounds. I don't know what it is. Somebody sent me this weighted blanket. Now, somebody being Stephanie for you, because the squad said it was Stephanie for you. And if Stephanie for you is in here, please let her know that uh, I got her... Um, weighted blanket i went to my p.o box today had a little ride along y'all was riding with me in my uh new car today okay i went live while i was driving and uh i picked this up and it says good sleep comes with from our weighted blanket because y'all know i do not sleep and this is amazing my mama that already claimed to talk about you sure they didn't send that for me <laughs> I'm like, okay, mama, hey, listen, I might have to give it to my mama, child, because she up here asking. I said, I had mentioned that somebody was sending her something, and she thinks that this is it. But look at it, it's how big, it's heavy. Ugh. Get a workout. Let me see, one, two, that's all the workout I need today, okay? Thank you so much for the way to burn like it, uh, Stephanie, for you. Um, Let me see what y'all saying. You said a way that blanket like, helps you sleep like a baby. Okay, I need that. I need that. Uh, did I answer your question about the new Real Housewives of Atlanta cast? Yes, I did. Miss Poo Poo, you must be late. We talked about that two, three days ago. In the video where I talked about Candy being fired, I told everybody about the new cast. I said Portia was coming back. I said Kenya was a possible, but now she's at a definite. Uh, I said Ming Lee was going to be a friend. I said Drew was coming back. I said Marlo was coming back. And everybody, anybody else I haven't heard yet. I said all that. And it's even like, if you go to it right now, it's even, I put the timestamps in there, okay? Thank you so much, Superwoman A. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You like my shirt? It's actually a dress, okay? 
it's one of them dresses that people be like, you ain't got no, you need some drawers on, too. No, nah, actually, it's um Fashion Nova. It's a sweater dress, and it's got the little holes in it all the way down to the bottom. I thought I was cute today, though. I had on my little black boots and stuff. I was out in the streets, honey. Um, what kind of car did I get? A Porsche Taycan. I went electric. Okay, I went electric. Uh, and I didn't watch all the videos about the Tycoon. Any video that they done made about the Tycoon, I didn't I didn't watch it. Okay. I got a brand new one. Okay. I get free um free charging for three years. <laughs> so it's it's been pretty good. I got it the first week of December. So and I haven't driven it because I haven't been home. I've been too busy driving the old car, you know, but it is what it is. I drove the old car to Tennessee there's that but the old car is great because i don't even drive it but um anywho <laughs> right right it's pretty too it's got the big old panoramic roof and everything it's pretty got the red interior and stuff but yeah i um i was telling the people on instagram that i was looking at y'all know i've been talking about a new car forever like i've been like my my other porsche my panamera is like 10 years old even though it ain't got that many miles on it it still look like new whatever but um you know, it's just, that was my baby. That was the first thing I bought when I started making money <laughs> was that Porsche Panamera in addition to some houses. And I even told y'all, I was like, I would never buy another car. I would never. I, <laughs> I'm going to drive that car till the wheels fall off. Well, the wheels didn't fall off, but I don't know. One day I just woke up and I wanted a car and I just went and got one. Child, and it is what it is. Um, You know how sometimes you just be feeling like, you know, you just need something. You said the car is over a hundred thousand dollars. Well, it might be. <laughs> it, it might be. It's a little pricey, okay. But I ain't paying for no gas. I'm gonna tell you in my mind what made me decide to buy the car, even though it's over six, over, over that much money, okay. It was because a, it's electric. It's good for the environment. B, I don't have to spend any money on gas ever, <laughs> you know, unless I'm driving the other car. But I don't have to spend any money on gas. Uh, all the gas for the car is free. No maintenance. You ain't got to change no oil. You ain't got to do none of that. I don't think I got to worry about it. It's tires, but since it's, you know, new, I got tire warranty. I got all kind of stuff on that car, child. But uh, I ain't got to do nothing. It's a new car, whatever. And C, um, because it's an uh, alternate uh, alternate fuel vehicle in Georgia, you know, we got HOV lanes. You know, traffic is hell going north south east and west and i'm always on 85 north and south okay sitting in traffic every day y'all not every day but when i'm out that's when i'm in traffic on 85 so i can be in the hov lane by myself that's like worth the cost of admission to me like y'all may feel differently <laughs> but i'm like oh shit Tesla people and, and uh electric car people ain't tell me that y'all can drive in the HOV lane with just one person. Who knew? We up here, we didn't know. We thought we had to have three, four people in the car, child. Two, three people. Uh, when I talked about the HOV lane benefit, that said, okay, Georgia Peach. I'm like, oh, and I be feeling so special every time I get on the highway. I'm like, oh, get over. Let me get over the HOV lane, honey. I'm like, yes, I'm here by myself. I don't need two people in my car. So, you know, it's, it's great. I love that, honey. I can get to the post office and stuff fast. I don't have to sit in the car no more. I'm going to be mad at with y'all on Instagram, just mad at traffic like I used to be. I ain't got to do that no more. It's great. <laughs> right. It's news to you. It was news to me, uh, except when I bought the car, they told me. So anyway, you said uh, one flaw with electric cars, batteries stop holding the same charge after so long. Well, I probably won't have a car forever. You know, I'm just saying, I'm, I was saying three years from now, I'll probably get another one. But, you know, <laughs> it is, you know, because I, I figure like electric cars also, you got to think just like with your iPhone, you buy an iPhone in two, three years, even though you don't get one every year. In two, three years, you're going to get another one or you'll upgrade to the next one because it's all about the technology in the vehicle or in the whatever it is. So that's how I consider this car is like just the technological version of, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, Let's get to the tea. Don't be rushing me, child. Don't be rushing me. I'm talking to the people. As y'all come in, go ahead and like this video. Save that gas, honey. We about to get into the year 2027. Well, you know, that's why I kept one gas car, one combustible engine car, and, and I have one electric car because I figure that, you know, I'm, you know, I may not want to be tracked because, you know, 
when you're in a Tesla or a, a Tycoon or any other these other electric vehicles, you know, so many out there. But when you're in those cars, like it's so much technology in the cars that the car know everything, everywhere you're going, what you're doing, all that. But then I was thinking when my friend was telling me this, I'm like, well, so does your phone. Like our phones do the same thing. So like you can't get away with it just because you got a gas car. It ain't like you ain't being tracked. You always being tracked. Big brother is always watching. So it is, you know, it is what it is. Like, okay, well, they're going to see me going to the grocery store. <laughs> you know, they're going to see me going to Target. They're going to track me going to my P.O. box. But whatever. Um, I can still write off the gas and mileage on electric cars, honey. You know, I can write off a lot for my business. And I can write off the whole damn car, honey. Anywho, I'm digressing. Our HOA is on the rise. Them smart cars going to drive you into the river. <laughs> That's the Tesla, you know, because Elon Musk is evil. That's another reason why I didn't want to buy a Tesla. I didn't want my money going to him. So I was like, I buy a Porsche. You know, the Germans are kind of racist too. I guess I was like, hey. but you know, Porsche um, USA is is um, one headquartered in Atlanta, so they do a lot of things around Atlanta too. So I've always been a supporter of Porsche. You know, that's why I got my Panamera and Porsche be throwing all the parties. They were celebrating the fifty years of hip hop. Blah 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 blah. So you know, I kind of. I have a little soft spot in my my heart for Porsche. Okay, you can opt out of being tracked. Okay, I mean I really don't care because it ain't like I'm running drugs. And <laughs> I should do a video in it. Let me see the view. Okay, I'll show you the video one day. I'll show it to you. Um, you said no Patreon notifications. I sent the Patreon notification. I did. I did. I did. Anywho. Uh, today's agenda. Oh, and thank you, Stephanie, for the weighted blanket. I think I said that. Okay, but thank you. Um, today's agenda. I know y'all read it. I talk about Monique and Sydney, honey, responding to DL Hughley. Okay, and it, she also announced that she's going on tour with Cat Williams. We're gonna watch that special announcement. In addition to that, I put some more things on the agenda as I was running down here to get ready. Because y'all was asking me, had I seen uh, Nini's Hunting Housewives trailer? And so I guess we could take a gander at that. Also, Kenya Moore has done yet another interview. Child, Kenya, Kenya has done three interviews in the past three days. Y'all don't find nothing suspicious about that. It's just really feeling like, you know, since Candy's was fired, now they didn't name Kenya the new tap dancing spokesperson for Bravo. And Kenya, we gonna talk about it, child. I'm gonna talk about it. And then I got Wendy, Wendy Williams on here, but we, you know, it's old news, but I haven't talked about it yet. So we're gonna talk about it. Um, Hey, She Mormon. Shout out to She Mormon. And you see all of these people in the green. These are my channel sponsors. You can be a channel sponsor too. Just click the join button down below. And I appreciate it. Now, who, let me see. First things first hmm. she has a movie to promote duh okay well okay lifetime movie promoting the lifetime movie it is what it is but in every interview she's talking about um housewives but before we get there i'm gonna start with nini i normally start at the bottom i'm starting at the top today because y'all know nini is the top around here <laughs> Uh, you know, but she's in a movie uh, called Hunting Housewives, which would be featured on the Lifetime. And the teaser trailer has dropped today. And so everybody wanted me to take a gander at this teaser. So as you come in, go ahead and like this video. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm about to look at it. Y'all know the drill. Copyright this name of the section 107 of the Copyright Act. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. What are we doing, ladies and gentlemen? We are definitely researching. Yes, I got a Porsche, not Porsche. <laughs> you know, people, you know, don't pronounce it. It's normally just one syllable, but there's that. Um, hold on, hold on. We're gonna look at it. We're gonna look at it. The official trailer for Nini's. These women are bleeding us dry. So do I have a solution to our problems? I am just so excited about our girls' weekend. Ready to board? I was born ready. <laughs> yes, Nini was born ready, honey. I think we had an accident. A lifetime original movie. One plane accident. Now, this might be kind of interesting. Now they get lost on a on a deserted island. The housewives, what they gonna be doing? They gotta survive by themselves. This would be funny. Four tough lessons. This is why I never go camping. 
Now let's really? see who's this cast. Hold on. Denise Richards, Nene Leakes, Melissa Ford, and Kim Johnson. Her Melissa Ford was a housewife. Oh, okay. Kim Johnson, her Javio. Who is that? I don't know, but okay. Let's look. Where's the tequila? You were in a plane crash. Oh my god, do we literally have to rub sticks together right now? Yeah. What was that? Oh, March. We got some time. Okay. Not they and they got on a little Diane von Furstenberg rap dress. I'm a survivor. I conquer all. Hell. This whole thing was a setup. Your husband. And they're being watched or something? Okay, so is this a reality show inside a reality show kind of thing? Interesting. Wired an entire forest to capture his wife's survival of a plane crash? Yeah. We're not going to die, okay? We have to. We've all just let our marriages fail. We all want something different. We want to change. I don't think you understand. Maybe there's some things I haven't told you about my marriage. You think? Well, where is Nene? I just see three people. Hunting Housewives premieres Saturday, March 9th at 8 on the Lifetime. Oh, it's over? What? We did see Nene at the beginning, didn't we? Hold on, let's go. Hold on. Solution we did stop. I am just so excited about our girls' weekend. Ready to board? I was born ready. <laughs> did Nene die in the plane crash? We didn't see her in the forest, did we? Hold on. We didn't see Nene in the forest. Lord, I hope she survived. Okay, we ain't see her no more. We just saw the other three people. But she was in the beginning looking amazing. <laughs> Not low budget. Y'all so <laughs> But it's only, look, y'all go support Hunting Housewives on Lifetime. Y'all support everybody else's low budget uh, Lifetime movies and Tubin movies and Peacock movies. So y'all go support that too, okay? Did she survive by the crash? I hope so. <laughs> I so you said that was her line under the blanket. Let me go back. Let me see. Okay, that's her right there. Okay. That was her going to the thing. That was her right there. Okay, that was her going to the point. <laughs> they had an accident. A lifetime original. They had an accident. One plane accident. Four. There wasn't no blanket. That looked like that was the that looked like that was the parachute. Accident. Four. I don't know. We yeah, we're gonna have to watch it to find out. <laughs> We gonna watch it to find out, right? Team Nene, okay. Uh, <laughs> See, this is y'all fault. This is y'all fault. Everybody be mad at me because y'all be saying all this bull crap. They be like, but she be let everybody talk about me. <laughs> but I'm supporting the film, okay? We gonna we gonna watch it. Meanwhile, okay, moving on. Like this video, please, and thank you. Uh, shout out to Nene Leaks and uh, everyone who is participating in the Hunting Housewives on uh lifetime next let's see next hold on hold on hold on is this another one <laughs> next i know y'all not already seen it we're gonna watch it again because i haven't talked about wendy williams all this stuff coming on lifetime lifetime is is lifetime they're giving tubi and everybody else a run for their money aren't they so uh next is uh Wendy Williams is going to be on Lifetime also, okay? Wendy Williams is executive producer of her own little documentary. Where is Wendy Williams? We ain't seen her. We ain't heard from her. Nobody knows where she is. Last time we saw her, she was walking down the street in New York in a fur coat and shorts, and she said she was 138 pounds. Uh, they also used the footage in this teaser. So let's check out this teaser and see what they're talking about. Y'all know the drill. Six years this old. Yada, yada, yada. All I wanted was to be famous. A lifetime two night documentary event. Showtime. At least Wendy get two nights. Okay. Executive produced by Wendy Williams. <laughs> yes, and I hope she is getting the check. The boss is walking, everybody. Nobody can do it like Wendy. No one. People love Wendy. You are a star. She was in her living room every single I just got to say this. I miss Wendy on the show. Like, she used to get on my nerves, and I didn't watch her all the time. But I really do miss her and her trending topics and hot topics and everything. Like, I do. And everybody talk about, oh, it's karma. What happened to her is karma. I don't I don't believe that. I think that, you know, everything has a reason and a season. And, you know, her season was just over or whatever. But hopefully, you know, she can come back strong. Or if not, you know, maybe... She can, you know, make other lanes. And what happened to the to the uh, podcast? Was 
remember she said she was gonna do a podcast or podcast anyway moving on Go for 12 years yep i guess that will do and that's what people responded to her authenticity and then at the peak of her career she was gone was it the peak and they did her wrong i think that i listen that's why i don't watch sherry just you know just as an aside because i don't like the way sherry was making them little comments about wendy when you know wendy was like being phased out but i'm digressing they go to chill and i gotta say this about the chair too you know they said wendy had to go back and get the damn chair out the dumpster they didn't even give wendy her chair they had threw it out back and wendy had to send somebody over there to get it allegedly are we ready yeah we're waiting on you all right and away we go love you wendy all i know is how to be famous i really want to be back on television you're gonna be back on tv that's yep. easy my mom has done a great job making it seem like everything is okay always. Wendy, make sure you look here. I love the fact that she got her son in here. At least we got one family member talking on her behalf. One, two, three. But in reality, there's something wrong going on. Did you see a neurologist to find out if I'm crazy? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God, no. Wendy said she already knows she a little touch. Oh, you saw that face. She was like, do I need a neurologist to find out I'm crazy? Because I know I'm crazy. Girl. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. No, I can't do this. I can't do this. I have to sit down again. She was put in front of a judge and given a guardian. That was when they took her away from us. I have no money. And I'm going to tell you something. If it happens to me, it could happen to you. As if that ain't a word, I don't know what he is. If that ain't a word, I don't know what it is. I don't care how many millions you making today, okay? Next year can be a totally different story. That's why you don't get too comfortable where you at because there's no darkness without light. There is no good without bad. There's no lemons without lemonade. <laughs> I just made that last part up. But y'all know what I'm talking about. Good and bad all co coexist, okay? So if you riding high today, something gonna happen. I'm just letting you know that's how I felt child but anyway i'm it's not about me it's her family we were all sitting on the sidelines watching and she was crying out for help did you drink this whole thing today keep it there okay Just keep it there oh uh -uh, not the liquor honey maybe you she is self-medicating sometimes you need a little vodka yeah my mom she always talks about how she wants to work but i feel as though she was working on she has people around who are yes people and allowing this to continue right? this is all now this is that that is true um what what little kevin said about the people around her because who was it around her that was running her social media and had everybody believing that podcast was coming soon wendy what you up to next podcast what, what what's going on podcast w wendy what are you doing podcast like what happened to podcast hmm. all too much go fly i have no idea where we are this doesn't look like anything familiar. I think she's losing memory. Have you guys noticed that? How dare him? Now she forgot what she was and she been in New York all her life. That's scary. I control me. I weigh one thirty-eight. Anybody could look at her and tell this is not just alcohol. There's something more going on. They wrong for that. They, they look, we already know Wendy had the disease that, you know, made her eyes be but why they do the lady like this we get it this i don't know i just feel like <sighs> this is too much if it wasn't for wendy williams sherry would not have a show sherry needs to show some respect exactly that's how i felt when sherry was throwing shade that time i didn't like it i did not like it at all uh when when was she that light was she that light now child she been in the house all this time she don't get no sun people you know get pale in the winter time <laughs> I miss my family. I'll be there. No matter how many times somebody may fall down, you got to lift them back up. We all make choices in life. We all go through our challenges. She's still a person. How you doing? Now we get to see her sisters and everybody, child. Everybody is coming out the woodwork. I want to know, is Wendy under a conservatorship like Britney or something? Like, who is in control of Wendy money? And where is Wendy money? And why her son couldn't pay his bills? And where is the money? And I know a lot of people were saying that she was faking because she didn't want her ex-husband to get his money or get the money that he wanted. 
uh to pay for him and his new baby and all that stuff but if, if, if that's the case she's she's a genius that's my sister there have been random people around you stealing money from me getting money whatever the case may be enough can you tell me where your sister is no i don't know the exact location of where she is i feel like the guardian has not done a good job of protecting my mom my now why does she need a guardian why does she need a guardian somebody asked me this the other day though and this is just me just think it out loud i don't know this to be factual or not but wendy's whole whole name likeness image was a brand was a business so i can understand why they would have like probably a board of directors over her entire life her entire persona over her management of her funds management of her money because there were so many people dependent upon her being successful and that was the sad part that's probably why she cracked and broke down because you know they kept pumping her up with whatever to keep her on set every day and you know eventually that's you just fumble and and and, and crash life my life right now she's weak and vulnerable and she needs to be around people who aren't going to take advantage of that. I have no friends. You know how many people come out to support you? You know how many people love you? No, I don't. Everything is. And who is this guy right here? He was with her the whole time too. Is this the guy who had her sitting up there in the lingerie talking about podcasts? I just need to know. Is this where is the man she she was telling Jason Lee she was married to? Where is the uh, police officer, the retired police officer she, she was allegedly married to? It's just all kind of stories going on. We don't know what's going on with Wendy. Sorry, baby. I know. I think that the guardianship system is broken. We are her family. And you tell me that I'm not capable of taking care of my sister. What would you do? What should I do? I love being tame. If her sister is a lawyer, she need to get in the courtroom and start filing documents because, you know, this ain't right. But family is everything. So good to see you again, Dad. It's good to see you, babe. Everything. Where is Wendy Williams? A two-night documentary event premieres Saturday, February 24th at 8. Only on February 24th at 8. I will be there with bells on because I got to see what's going to happen. Y'all going to watch it? Put a one in the chat if y'all here for uh, Wendy Williams. She's surrounded by opportunists. It ain't hard. It ain't hard. And in, in, uh, in every genre, there's a bunch of opportunists. Trust me. I have been a victim of several. So it don't matter. It's like as soon as people see you, they see a cash cow and they latch on to it. It ain't. It ain't look it ain't difficult and that's what we was talking about yesterday with monique and i'm not saying her husband is one of those people but i'm just saying in general people will latch on when they feel like you um are weak and you need somebody to manage your money i don't need nobody to manage my money anyway moving on <laughs> like this video please and thank you y'all gonna watch it okay i'm gonna watch it too and we're gonna talk about it. we are definitely going to talk about it now moving on I didn't want to talk about Kenya, but I'm going to talk about Kenya because she did a video uh, interview today with um, with Page Six, and she's kissing Portia's ass as expected because you know Portia, you know, is coming back. I feel like Portia is probably going to be an anchor along with Kenya. Um, but one thing that I don't like about Kenya and all these interviews, because she was on the Breakfast Club a couple of days ago and she was talking as well, is she keeps bringing up Nene's name and she keeps talking about how Nene, the door is closed and all this. So it's like, who is you, Kenya? Is you the gatekeeper? Are you the person? Did you lock the door? Like, how are you to say what door is closed for whom? But hold on, we're going to watch Kenya's interview right now. Y'all come on in and like this video, please. And thank you. Oh no, let me put it in here. Kenya Moore. There you go. And what's her name? Bernie Zillick. All right, Kenya and Bernie. Put myself down here at the bottom like this. 
uh hey y'all hey y'all you said they may close the door on her okay that's what i said when we was talking about wendy williams you know it might be you if it can happen to her it can happen to you don't be counting your chickens before they hatch don't be having your ass on your back you know it happened to candy they snatched that peach right right away from candy i told y'all that two weeks ago y'all didn't believe me people anyway i'm digressing because people get mad when i tell the truth uh hold on hold on hold on let's look at let's listen can you tell us about real housewives of atlanta season 16. <laughs> not a lot <laughs> oh come on <laughs> so y'all keep saying she's doing interviews about this lifetime movie but don't nobody care about that lifetime movie every time she get on the interview the first thing they ask her is about housewives what is going on with housewives kenya 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 i can say this i know that they are closer to making a final decision on cast and she knows that why because if she didn't have her contract how would she know they was close to to determine a final a final decision we know candy got the boot kenya knows kenya candy got the boot we know porsche's coming back kenya knows porsche is coming back so is this her way of telling everybody that she's coming back to or even confirming it because some other people have already said it but my people say they were undecided on kenya but i guess now they aren't but let's listen interesting yeah okay. And I think within the next, you know, I think within the next 30 days, they will have finalized the new cast. She said within the next 30 days, Kenya's face is looking a little uneven. Did she get some Botox and lip fillers? Okay, Kenya, we see you, girl. That's wild. Okay, so do you have an idea of when, like, filming would start then? I think the spring. Spring. Got yeah. it. I think soon. I think, I think they're definitely... They, I mean, I think they're a hundred percent focused on creating a, a a dynamic a dynamic new cast um, with some oldies and some newbies. So we'll see. We'll see. <sighs> Kenya's energy is always so fake. I mean, you know, it is what it is. Yes, Portia is really coming back, y'all. Portia is really coming back, and Kenya is really kissing her ass. Season 16 might just be as sweet as you want it to be. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Okay. So you need to humor me for just a second. Okay. A producer calls you. Kenya, you've been on this show forever. You're a staple. We need your opinion. Yes. <laughs> that, that's a very clever way to put that shady ass <laughs> question. Back up off the camera, Kenya. We see you. <laughs> I'm, I've learned from watching you. They call you up. Kenya, we need your opinion. Are we bringing back Nini, Portia, both or neither? Now, listen, I would feel a ways too if every interview that I'm in, they don't care about me. They care more about other people than they do about me. Instead of asking Kenya, what's going on in your life? She asking about Nini and Portia, child. Well, I pretty much know the door is closed on Nini, um, you know. I think Andy has said it out of his own mouth that, you know, he's going to keep her name out of his mouth. So I think I. So why is she using that as a talking point? Did she get permission? This is it's giving me she got permission and that she's a talking head for Andy and the network. You know, Candy used to be the talking head. Y'all remember Candy was going from uh, station to station, from network to network, from platform to platform saying that, you know, there's no racism at Bravo. I'd never experienced racism at Bravo. And then you, here you go. Here's Kenya doing, you know, similar things. I have to say that's not a possibility. So you got to go at Portia. Okay. okay. <laughs> how, would, how would you personally feel sharing a screen with Portia again? I mean, I think we made great TV together. You know, I think we're the best friend of me. Some of the best times on that show has been created with me and Portia. Some of the most iconic moments um have been created with us being on screen together so i feel yeah I like things are are impossible nothing is impossible i don't have can't in my vocabulary you can't tell me what i can't do and you can't tell anybody or the universe that nini can't ever come back to the housewives like i'm just saying y'all keep saying that oh she sued them oh she sued blah 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 monique sued netflix and she was tap dancing on Netflix and she had a whole special. Uh, Vicky Govison sued Bravo and she was back on Bravo. So I don't know. You can't never say never. I mean, I'm just saying. I feel like that magic could still exist if she comes back. 
Yeah. Oh my God. No, it's true. Oh. You two together are <laughs> the dynamic is insane. It's so entertaining. You yeah, were it. the frenemies you never knew you needed. <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, okay, Kenya, we don't care. Okay. Meanwhile, as we stated, uh, as I stated yesterday, Kenya um, was talking about Mark on the Breakfast Club and revealed that Mark is engaged. Okay, and but she also revealed that the divorce isn't actually final yet. So it's like, dang, Mark then went and got him a new woman, and he ain't even div divorced yet. That's giving me they were never married. But anyway, y'all never saw the uh, marriage license, and we never saw the divorce decree. <laughs> Nobody can find it. Nobody knows where it is, honey. But I'm digressing. I guess that'll be uh her storyline next season. Be chasing Mark Daly, okay? Um, especially when money is involved, she's coming back everywhere else, okay? That's all I'm saying. Don't ever say never. And how can you, as a cast member, speak on what another cast member will or will not do? How can you, as a cast member, speak on what the executives? will or will not do i didn't like i don't like that because my thing is them tables always turn ask candy burris them tables always turn candy is getting that nini treatment even though they're treating candy a little bit better at least they you know celebrating her exit <laughs> like andy said thank you for your service candy thank you bye <laughs> but you know it is what it is it is she's gone okay they don't have to cut that check no more they can give that money to somebody else they are like celebrating it in a different way uh candy had a worse attitude Ooh, i don't think kenya was ever married or never found it in fulton county i don't think she was ever married either she's lucky she's bad lucky lucky <laughs> he said who is this woman with the little house oh child, i don't know who the lady is it's this lady from uh, page six okay shout out to her her name is bernie Anyway, moving on, like this video, please. And thank you, like this video. Um, I also want to, hold on, let me touch on this. Uh, this is kind of like open topics. I'm going to get to Monique in a second, y'all. I'm going to get to Monique. What about, okay, Vivica Fox is also uh, chiming in on Taraji yet again. Y'all recall the first time she spoke about Taraji, it was a little shady, basically saying that uh, Taraji was crying wolf because she was like, I've never had a problem in Hollywood. And it's like, girl, you supposed to be standing in solidarity with your fellow black queen, uh, Vivica. How are you um, standing on the sidelines like Candy Burris? <laughs> standing solo saying it never happened to you. I've never experienced racism at Bravo. And Vivica is like, I've never experienced this in Hollywood. But I'm digressing. Hold on a second. Let me go over here. Let me go over here to uh, Vivica Fox. Do, 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 do. Uh -huh. Like this video, please. And thank you as y'all come in. Uh, Brown Girl Grinding. Brown Girl Grinding had an interview with Vivica. And here is what she had to say about Taraji. And it's on Hollywood Unlocked. Hold on. I'm going to put it up here. Vivica A. Fox speaks on her recent statement about Taraji P. Henson's unequal pay comments. I have a tendency not to complain because I do the work. Hmm, sounds kind of nice, nasty to me. But hold on, we about to look at it. Who at my front door? Uh, here it is. And this is through Brown Girl Grinding. Shout out to Brown Girl Grinding for the interview. About like a lot of the roles that you've been able to work in and things that you've been able to do as an actress. I know that there was the clip that happened where you responded to Taraji and her telling her story with Color Purple and the money not being there, whatever the case may be. We want to know, do you feel like um, now is the perfect time to have the conversation? Y'all remember this. This was on TMZ and y'all know copyright disclaimer, blah, blah, blah. That Taraji kind of continued over oh, Monique, you know, you're an actress, you've been out there. Is this the perfect time to kind of talk about that in the right platform? You know, darling, to each his own. Do you know what I mean? I'm very happy, very blessed. And uh, to each his own. I didn't have that experience, so, you know, but to uh, get your peace out is important. I totally.
I'm a little bit like Candy Burris. I've never experienced racism at Bravo. Have you, Cynthia? No, Cynthia. I'm, uh, uh. Cynthia's like, uh-uh, Candy, I've never experienced racism. We understand that. And uh, I love my girls for hey, looking guys. out for each other. But uh, I'm good. And you said that you didn't have that experience. You've been blessed. What was your experience? Like, you, what? You heard him say, I'm good. You're good. But, but what Which does good mean good? for Vivica A. Fox? For me, it means I. So you talked about like a lot of the roles that you've been able to work in and things that you've been able to do as an actress. I know that there was the clip that happened where you responded to Taraji. Oh, no, and her telling you, every set's not going to be pleasurable. You know what I mean? You're going to get there and there's going to be some surprises. The, the, the trailer ain't right or something's not right. You push them. Right. Because what's more important to myself is the work and getting the work done. Um, as a producer, you got to make your days. You got 12 hours. Mm. 12 hours to make your day. You don't make your day, you're not going to be working that much anymore. So you learn to push through. So when I said I'm good, I'm a worker bee. Right. I have a tendency to not complain um, that I do the work. I, I do the work. I complain afterwards. I pick up the phone. If there's a problem, I call my people. That's what they're doing conversations that are had, how things are handled, that all you said, if you don't make your day, you're not going to be working as much. Yes. How, what has been the vetting process for you finding your people that know how to hold you down in a way where you can always be good? Loyalty. That when I call them, they don't think that I'm complaining. They know, oh my God, if she's calling me, something must be wrong. Right. They know that I am such a worker bee that nine times out of 10, you're not going to hear me complaining until the project's over that when we go out to celebrate that it's over, that I'm like, girl. <laughs> Girl, you know, so uh, they know that if I call them, that something really must be wrong. And I try to call call them when I can calm down because um, that's important. I, I think that you know sometimes when no, I know that when you're a woman and you complain, then bitch is attached to that, or you're emotional. Yeah, yeah, or angry black. Woman, yeah, which is even worse. We all been there. Yeah, we all been there. So basically, she's saying she don't want to be labeled an angry black woman, so she don't complain. She just pushed through. I don't like it. I don't know. Y'all probably like, her. yeah, Vivica is right. Vivica's resume speaks for herself. She's been in Kill Bill. She's been in this. She's been in that. But I don't know. I don't like it. Independence Day, exactly. But yeah, yeah, that's that sound a little crab in the barrel-ish to me, like. Mm, basically, you just all for self. You Steve Harvey part two. Remember when Steve Harvey told him, uh, told Monique he got children to feed. He he can't be fighting every fight now. We gotta you gotta choose your battles wisely. That's what it sounded like to me. Like mm, that's why we as black people we can't never stand together. We gotta we it's all for one, one for all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We it's just all us. As long as I'm getting to the bag, you know I can't I can't deal with your problems. That's horrible. I don't like it. But, you know, that's why I sit over here by myself. <laughs> Look, I'm not a team player either, I guess. Yes, congratulations to Vivica Fox on her NAACP nomination. Mm -hmm. If Vivica doesn't want to get involved, she should just say no opinion. She should have, but she spoke on it. She said she is a worker bee, honey. She said problems may arise, but she does not want to be labeled an angry black woman, honey, or a B-I-T-C-H. Hmm. Label me. <laughs> Label me because I'm gonna tell you how I feel. Shoot, whatever. Uh, that is why she have no money. I don't know how much money Vivica. Let's be fair now. Vivica be working all the time. Uh, Vivica will let Monique fight the battle, then she will reap the benefits of somebody else fighting. Yup, that's what people do. Mm -hmm. Yes, choose your battles wisely. My kids got to eat. <laughs> okay, Steve Harvey. Okay, it is what it is. Okay. Uh, in my book, what's that? Uh, she also said she let her management team handle her problems. Okay, you do have to have a good management uh team. Vivica called Nini a cokehead, and she did. She does not stay above the fray. She just as messy as everybody else. Let's let's be real now. Let's be real. Uh, y'all know Fitty made sure Vivica well taken care of. Did he? Did he? I don't know if he did or not. But anyway, she have a network of four. <laughs> Well, that's not a lot of money in this world. But anyway, I'm digressing. I'm digressing because, you know, y'all be like, oh, she's so, she bragging. Because, I mean, it's YouTubers that make that. Four million? You've been working this long? You need to have more than four million. She need to have about 20 in the bank. 
just for real and assets. But I'm digressing. I'm digressing. Salute to Vivica A. Fox. Let's move on to uh, our main topic tonight. As y'all get here, it's 1,500 of y'all in here counting uh, Rumble. 15, 16. Okay. Counting. Well, we're not counting Rumble because numbers ain't in Rumble. This is all YouTube numbers. So shout out to y'all. Like this video, y'all getting here. Uh, let's talk about Monique and Monique's response to DL Hughley. Just yesterday, DL responded very quickly to um Monique's. Hold on, real mo real wide. Monique's uh Club Shay Shay interview. And in doing so, you know, he, he he said a little jabs about her weight and stuff. But he also, he was very, very angry. Um, DL said that Monique was lying and the truth ain't in her, honey. He said, you know, y'all keep listening to her and she built her. And yeah, he had had a whole lot to say. Well, Monique and Sydney, we talked about it yesterday, by the way. You want to see that video? Watch yesterday's video because I'm not going to go over DL's video again today. But today... Monique and daddy, <laughs> Monique and her daddy, Sydney, uh, got online. You know, they used to get online a lot, but they got online today and basically responded to, you know, everything that's been going on. They got on here quick, but they didn't adjust the camera right. They too low in the camera. Why you got all that space up there in the top? You should have adjusted the camera. Now nah, I can't sit down here. Let me put myself at the top. Okay, I put myself in the empty space. Okay, DL was ruthless. Yes, Monique and Daddy had to respond. Let's listen. <laughs> we go wait for y'all to come on in, my babies. Come on, my babies. Come on in, sweetie. We ain't done it a long time, Daddy. Let me see if I got the other version so I can fast forward. Hold Look, y'all don't even understand why we smiling so hard because we was able to get it set up. <laughs> We was able to push, push the, the button. button. Hey, come on now. Not push the button. We want you babies to come on in here. First of all, how y'all doing? It's been a minute, my babies. It's been a minute. Life been life it. Life been life it. Where we at, Daddy? What do you mean? Okay. Yeah, I think it's enough babies in there. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's go get it. Come on. Well, thank you for tuning in. <laughs> thank you, Measure Man. We just wanted to take a few minutes to address a couple of things that have taken place after the Club Shay Shay interview. Much love to Shannon Sharp. Yes. Hold on just a second. I'm going to put the other version up so that I can fast forward through the video. Uh, there it is. Bam, bam. Okay. We go away. Fast forward through. What was we? Take a few minutes to address a couple of things that have taken place after the Club Shay Shay interview. Much love to Shannon Sharp. Yes. Good brother. Thank you for allowing Monique to come on the platform. Be a listening ear. Continue success on what it is that you're doing. Thank you for being a real one. Yeah, baby. Thank you. Thank you. We want to do Thank you, baby. And foremost, our brother. My sweet babies. Mm. And we are firm believers on what is right is right and what is wrong is wrong. Yes. So we got to start off by saying there was an inaccuracy as it regards Monique saying that there was a, cis, a cease and desist that was given to DL to shut it down. Mm -hmm. Finally, Monique and daddy are admitting some little bit of wrongdoing. So apparently there wasn't a cease and desist. Hold on. We about to listen though. What had taken place to be accurate was after Monique spoke, to Brother DL on that conversation, Brother DL said, what? Well, after we spoke on that conversation, when we hung up that phone, the last thing he said was, it is what it is. And I said, DL, then we're going to have to get our attorney involved. That's the last thing me and DL Hughley said on that conversation. And after having that conversation with Monique, we went and got our attorney involved. Attorney Anderson. At the time, 
there were some emails that were transferred back and forth between his side and our side. And it escalated to a point when we had our attorney on the email, whereby then finally DL said that he would scratch the interview. Yes. So it was inaccurate that a cease and desist had to be given. However, that was the next step. And that's what Monique remembered because when I discussed it with her, we said that would be the next step. So Sydney is admitting that Monique told a falsehood on Club Shay Shay. I mean, that's what I'm getting from this. Y'all let me know if y'all getting something different. Because Monique said there was a cease and desist. Sydney's saying there was not a cease and desist, but there was about to be a cease and desist. But he, they took the video or the, the, the interview down before the cease and desist could be uh, submitted. That's what he's saying. But to DL's credit, at that moment, when it had escalated, that's when he decided to shut it down. However, that is a bit different from how it seemed to have been communicated, whereby on the phone, they were having a conversation and it was kumbaya, though he never used those words kumbaya, mm -hmm. it did not end with her being under the impression that this was going to be resolved and shut down. So we wanted to make that clear out of love and respect for Brother DL. And despite all the commentary that he gave, <laughs> with, he all gave the, with all the crunches she'd be doing, the I, captain's in the front. I do. And I do. Tell her. I'm a sneak snacker, baby. And she doesn't Not sneak sneak when she snaps. Okay. Hey. But nonetheless, we wanted to be clear because Monique says she don't care about the fat jokes. So y'all outraged that DL saying that Captain Crunch in the front, whatever he said, uh, when Monique laughed about it. At the end of the day, we black folks in this world of entertainment. And there was a level of harshness in his return that seemed a little bit exaggerated for the moment. And we wanted to make it clear, and I think Monique can do it best when she speaks in reference to what she meant while talking about DL in the past. You know, when I watched DL say, she went after my wife, she went after my daughters, I want to really be clear who I went after so that there's no confusion here. When I was on stage, when I'm on stage and we are performers, we are performing to the audience in front of us. When I was on that stage and I said, it must be hard to perform oral sex. But differently. Okay. On a coward. That had nothing to do with Mrs. Hughley. That insult was directed straight to you, DL. That had nothing to do with your wife. That was straight to you. So it felt like you were trying to pass it off as if I was going after your wife. When it comes to your daughter, to the baby that you did a post about, you did an interview about, I didn't do that interview. Oh Lord, she bringing up the baby again, child. I simply reposted what you said. So when you say, Monique, you went after my daughter, that's untrue, DL. I posted what you said. And then when you say, Oh, y'all talk about Monique isn't passive aggressive. If that ain't passive aggressive, I don't know what it is. I didn't say it. I just reposted what you posted. Well, you reposted it is basically, you know, submitting what you thought about the situation to your audience. I oh child, this is messy. You said on on your when you were really going for it with your shades on, and you said Monique said I stood by and watched my daughter be raped. Dio Hughley. That's your conscience talking to you, brother. I never said that. I never said that. And I want to be a little clear about something else. Never would I try to do anything to harm any of your babies because we got babies too. So never would I try to do anything to harm your children. However, what I was saying 
to your daughter and to the other daughters out there, I know what it's like for your daddy to know you've been touched and he not protect you. Oh my God, she's still bringing up the child and the molestation. It's like opening the wound all over again. I don't, oh, this is so nice, nasty. Y'all, oh, I'm just watching it. I, where's the popcorn? My daddy did the same thing. That, that's what that whole point was, but I was showing why I would call you a coward, brother. I don't think it's brave that you didn't protect your baby. So when I said what I was saying, let me be clear to you, D.L. Hughley, it had nothing to do in reference to your family. And you know that. Now, when you were speaking and you were going off and you said, um, uh, what did you say? She was so offended by the game we play, but you didn't say what the offense was. And that's the part for me that is disheartening that you continue to try to trick and smoke and mirror our people. If you're gonna say it, say it all the way through. When you say family is sacred, you are absolutely right, baby. You're right. But when you say would my husband rather and you co-sign your team of people doing that, well, isn't my husband sacred? So you can but he wasn't there. It was his team. He wasn't there. I mean, I'm not defending anybody. Like the, the the would you rather was fucked up. Okay. We know that they were aiming for your husband. We know that. But it's just too much. Like, damn, like it's like she focuses on one thing and just keeps going and going and going and going and fighting and fighting. Don't you have other battles to fight? We tied. Gotta be careful in your words because the very words you use, DL, they're gonna come back and they're coming back to bite you, baby. And what I also said on Club Shay Shay, when I looked in that camera, I said, DL, I love you, brother. And I don't see that's the passive aggressive stuff I was talking about yesterday. Y'all say it's not passive aggressive. She's standing on business. But anytime you go and you talk about I love you, I love you, you know, there's love there, my babies. And then on the other hand, you say some nasty shit about, you know, the daughter being touched and all that. That ain't no love there. Just just stop talking. I don't know if you didn't hear that part, but we really do. We love you, brother. And if ever you get courageous enough to want to have a conversation, we're always open to it because doing that, it shows how our community can get better. When you're wrong, as we have said to you, hey, brother, we apologize on that one. Yeah, incorrect on the cease and desist. And I want to add... Y'all hear that? They they admit they was incorrect, but listen, it's already been said in front of millions of people on the Shay Shay show. Millions of people not watching this this live stream that they put on they on the uh Instagram page. But I'm digressing. Now everybody think that Dia had a cease and desist. And one more thing, when you spoke in reference to your daughter being a reason why Monique stopped speaking about it, what you don't even understand out of love for you, out of love for you. See, you can have a problem with your brother, but you're not going to take it out on kids. And we respected the fact that she tried to defend you, but we got three big ass sons that if we were to think about it in the same way that she thought about it, what would that be? But out of love for you, we're not going to go after your child trying to protect the father that she loves. But one could argue, based upon what you said about yourself, had you exhibited the same type of love and protection for your other daughter, that your other there they go again. You still bringing up the daughter, y'all? Y'all not seeing what I see. I'm being fair, but my thing is, if the argument is over, if the apology was made, why continue pressing the issue and still bringing up that man's child? I mean, I'm not on nobody's side. Like y'all said, DL has said some trash things. Monique has said some trash things. Sydney has said some trash things. But why you keep talking about that girl? Other daughter tried to exhibit towards you there never been, would have been the commentary that you made about yourself. And I liken it to Brother Corey Holcomb, who I don't know, but I got a- Damn, they done dragged another comedian into it. A lot of respect for him, because I heard him say something in an interview. He spoke about how Earthquake's son had came to one of his shows 
and the young man was hesitant about introducing himself or reintroducing himself because of the rift between his father and himself. And Brother Cord was like, come on, man. No, 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 no. You come over here and I'm going to give you love because that was between your father and I. And it made him reconsider the whole thing and reach back out to an old friend. Before y'all even get started, I know y'all in here talk about, is it over with Junkie? You say this about Junkie, blah, blah, blah. I ain't bring Junkie family into it. I don't bring Junkie mama, daddy, sister, brother into it. This be between me and Junkie. You be with me, we be forever. You steal my washing dryer, steal money out my purse. I'm, and listen, and, and, and tell my real estate, I'm going to always speak on it because that was my experience. However, I'm not talking about your brother was molested or this person or that person. like who's doing that this is crazy in my humble opinion that's what real men do we come from the old school we not gonna have no problem with your children because we love them and we love you and we want y'all to win not at the expense of the community though being demeaned in order to get followers but for this from the standpoint of if we come together if we come together, we're going to win just by default. So at the end of the day, when you get to talking about how Monique is not loved and this, that, and I know, right? How I get it. <laughs> Soon as I start talking about Monique, everybody try to compare my beefs with, with Monique's beef with all the comedians. I got to be with one person and everybody that, you know, is in the orbit of that one person wants to beef with me too. Color is Claudia, uh, T.S. Manhands, Tasha K, but now me and Tasha K, we all right. But at the end of the day, like this stuff that's going on with Monique is a whole bunch of different people. Oh, the, <laughs> that's, that's your perception, but what I'll say is it is due to the love that we have that we're able to love those that say things that are uh, could be construed as hurtful, but we understand that the old saying of hurt people hurt people. Mm. So we don't take what you say personally, brother. They can't take it personally because they hurt and they hurting people. So they can't take it personally. Everybody in this situation is hurt. So if DL is hurt, she's hurt too, and she's striking out, and Sydney's hurt, and he's striking out. It's just a messy mess. And again. It's nothing but love. In addition to the fact, I'm Q Sci Fi. Mm. Just like you, except them. I've been in okay. about 29, going on 30 years. I'm not going to argue with you, frat. Ain't nothing but love. So we wanted to extend that to you and let you know what it is. And again, if you ever want to speak, let's have a real conversation. But people needed to know where the confrontation on stage began. And it was from that day. Oh, it was yeah. from that day. And once you own that day, DL, guess what, baby? We'll be good. Now, talking about we're going we to be good. What I don't like, and I know some of y'all are going to disagree, but it don't matter because y'all always disagree with me, is like Monique and Sydney both, they always try to force people to apologize or force people, like y'all say, to take accountability, but taking accountability based off of what they say instead of off of what the other person say, how do we know who's telling the truth? We just out here. We just listening to her side of the story. Maybe the other person has some details that we don't know. So how can you say that one person needs to be held accountable over the other. I don't like it. Talking about we gonna be good and talking about taking ownership. I want to talk to my babies at the breakfast club. The breakfast club. I want to talk to my babies Ooh, at the here breakfast we go. club. Here go another fight. The Listen, breakfast club. Oftentimes people don't know what a genuine apology will do. They don't even understand. It allows us to say we accept that apology and we move forward because today y'all own that. Today, Charlemagne, today, Envy, y'all own that. And I want to speak to my baby, Jess Hilarious. Come on. I want to speak to your little sister. Ooh. And let me speak to DJ and, 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 and Leonard first. Okay, because I can't give, I, I'm not going to do the nicknames. She's a beautiful asset sitting in that seat. 
Mm-hmm. And she's going to bring something very special to that show. And I know the community is agreeing with what I'm saying right now, because what that sister did when she sat in that seat, she was able to get y'all to see something and understand something that nobody could get you to see for years, for years. And just that baby sitting there with nothing but honesty and said, no, we got to deal with this, y'all. We got to deal with this, y'all. You don't understand what that baby's bringing to that show. Because what she's not going to be bringing is, let's knock down, drag them out. Right is right and wrong is wrong. And because you babies owned it and you apologize. We love you. And we loved you then. Not mad. And want y'all to win. Yeah, I could be team black woman and still call out the mess that I see. I could I could be team black woman and still call out the passive aggressiveness. I could be team black woman and still call out Candy for being a tap dancer. I can I can be team black woman. Why is it that we all have to be a monolith? I can't like everybody gotta be the same. If I'm team black woman, I gotta support every single black woman in the world, whether they wrong or right. Come on now, be for real, y'all. That's all. That's all. So if we start pumping out that positivity into our community, if we start speaking about the greatness that we are and the greatness that we're doing, guess what's going to happen? Now, do we still have to bring some to the mat and ring the doorbell? Ding dong. Yes, we do. But we don't love them no less because at any given time, we could be brought to the mat. Ding dong. Well, we make it a, 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 a point of not messing with people that's not messing with us and we hope that today for you guys the feeling that charlemagne got brother lenard received from the community by big up in him i spoke on what dl said yesterday friend for apologizing it's kind of like a movie we used to watch with the kids called monsters inc where they would go in, they would scare the people for power. But then they found out laughter created more power. Y'all have the power to heal. Mm -hmm. Use it. Use it to heal. Use it to help folks. Don't hurt folks. Because what happens is Mm -hmm. one of the greatest gifts we can have is going in our community and getting the love from our people. Forget Holly weird, cause it's weird. Y'all, again, just like the other day when uh, Colorist Claudia was on that other blogger's platform talking about what Michelle needs to do on her platform is this. Why can't she talk about politics? Why can't she do this? You don't tell nobody what to do on their platform. You don't. And and them saying this to the Breakfast Club, I don't like that either. You can't tell the Breakfast Club what to do on their platform. Okay, if he apologized, he apologized. Move on. But But all of this extra again this passive aggressive what we need to do is celebrate no stop it it's like a rallying cry and and, and, and some people are falling for it i i just i just see through it i'm sorry getting the love from our people it's so like we're trying to be indoctrinated into this cult or something and i'm emotional about it because i'm happy that y'all got an opportunity to do that for yourselves and we love y'all brothers and sisters. And just hilarious, keep that going. Keep that going because you are a great addition because there were others that would have sat in that seat and would not said a, have said a word. So <clears throat> nothing but love and respect for y'all. And one last thing. Thank you, Charlemagne, for not calling a brother daddy. Okay. Hey. <laughs> Thank you for not calling me daddy. You did the right thing, and you didn't know me. Apology. It was Monique. So we love y'all. You know, and we said before we came on that we was not going to be long, and we were just going to say, you know, what we needed to say. But I want to say to our community, don't give up on us. 
in our in terms of our community. Yes. Don't give up. Don't give up on your relationships. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. You got to keep going and keep pushing and keep standing strong. Don't give up on your love. Please hear me. And I'm talking right to the sisters. Don't give up on your love. Don't give up on that man that's treating you in a way that you ain't never been treated. Don't give up on that man that's loving your babies. And some of them may not even be his. Don't give up on that man that is taking your shit. Or woman. Or woman. And still standing strong with you. Don't give up, y'all. So when people say, why does he have to be there? Because he makes me better. He makes me stronger. He makes me, he makes me happier. He's made me a better mother, a better wife, a better friend, a better entertainer. He makes me better. So listen, y'all, if y'all got somebody that is making you better, if y'all got somebody that's hanging in there with you when you know goddamn well you should have been dropped off, be unafraid to hold making you better while you cutting them a check and you ain't got to pay to make nobody better i'm not paying nobody to, to make me better i'm not i'm not if i gotta pay you you my consultant you're not my husband Going to him. be unafraid is it challenging to grow up it's challenging it is especially when we've been taught some shit all of our lives and we've seen it it can be challenging that is why we haven't people, heard the good news I yet no hate the light heart for you brother when i see you walking through the airport with a support dog i'm not making fun of you i'm just saying brother if you have to have this why are you going after the people like you do why it ain't necessary be funny without all of that and when we speak about oprah when we speak about tyler when we speak about cbs we're not speaking about them to call them out. We're speaking to call them up because the same way that the Breakfast Club was able to say, I'm sorry, the same way Brother Lee Daniels was able to go across the stage and apologize, the same way that we were able to say, we are sorry. It was inaccurate about the cease and desist. Is the same way that Oprah, who teaches master classes, well, sometimes we got to love enough we got to love the teacher enough to sit them down and say, it's time for you to be a student again. Mm. Tyler Perry, it's like, brother, the world heard you on audio saying you were wrong. You cost our family tens of millions of dollars. We don't hate you. We love you because you were trying to do the right thing. But as Gail King said when she did that interview about Kobe Bryant, certain people suggested that she just stay quiet, but she couldn't. Don't listen to people that tell you to stay quiet when you've done what you weren't supposed to do when you've done wrong. Speak up, acknowledge it, because it helps us help the community. And guess what? We are only human beings. Y'all keep talking about us talking about how she loves her man. She keep telling us how she loves her man. We didn't ask her for this. We didn't ask you what's going on with you and daddy. You keep coming and telling us what's going on with you and daddy, which in turn it has a whole sea of people criticizing what's going on with you and daddy. We don't care. Okay. We are only human beings and we got to let you know we love you enough because we know that's all y'all are too. Despite people making y'all think y'all are more than that. That's it, my babies. That's it. And you know, we have always spoke about when it ain't been fair, but we try to make sure we speak about when it is fair. We try to make sure we speak about when people do say, you know what, let me show you what I'm about. And I want to talk to y'all about our brother, Cat Williams. <clears throat> now, y'all know that is my fraternal twin brother, non-biological, okay? And I want to tell you about some my good news. twin brother, Look how quickly they went from crying to smiling. This was like a, a, a light switch. Cat Williams, baby, guess what? I'm going to be joining my brother, my twin brother, Cat Williams, on the Dark Matter tour. So I'm excited. We are excited. I cannot wait to see y'all. Connecticut, I see y'all tomorrow night with our brother, Cat Williams, all in New York with our brother, Cat Williams. 
And I'll say this too. And I told him this. I said, for as funny and as talented as you are, your heart is far bigger. Real talk. And that brother then touched our community, baby, in ways that he's never even talked about. Those are the real ones. Because as they say, real G's move in silence. Oh, like lasagna. That said. <laughs> well, give me a kiss on that one. All right, give me a kiss, baby. What you say? My name. Love y'all. Well, oh, I was going to say my name. Yes, was my baby. <laughs> <laughs> did you tell me they know who you are? I did, Daddy. Okay. Shit, I forgot. We love y'all for real, my babies. Thank y'all. Yes. Now we don't know how to cut this shit off. Okay, Daddy. Wait, uh, oh, they still on. Now. Can you bring it to me? Okay. okay wait a minute, sugar. <laughs> Okay, y'all. It's the on. best okay. part of life. There you go. <laughs> That's the best part of life. Bring it here. Bring it. Let me hold on. Press the button on the left. I think this is how we get it off. <laughs> uh, congratulations to Monique for uh going on tour with Cat Williams child. Like, I mean, okay, like what I mean, not the grandparents. Uh I Y'all keep saying that I'm that I'm hating. What am I hating on exactly? Just because I have an opinion. I'm not hating on Monique and her daddy. I'm happy that she found a daddy to raise her, raise her up to be the woman that she wants to be. That she put all of that in into a man's hand so he can like build her up, child. That's what I mean. You know, that's that's what people are supposed to do, I guess. That's her daddy and everybody in the world are her babies. <laughs> Where are the adults? Where are the adults in the situation? There, nobody is an adult except Sydney. Sydney is the only grown person because Monique is calling everybody babies. Baby, baby, babies. You my baby. You my baby. She my baby. We need some grown people to, to enter the chat because I'm tired of being a baby, honey. Anyway, moving on. What does Linnell think of this child? I don't know. Let's call her and find out. What am I hating on, Chris? What am I hating on? It's 1,600 people in the chat. Y'all like this video. Or, or thumb it down. I don't care. Um, I'm hating on their marriage. What is, what is this? Where y'all come from? Y'all must don't know me. I am team marriage. I am team traditionalist. However, I am not team pimp ho. Okay? I not pimp some hoes down. I am not going to give no man my check. No man is going to put me to work while he sit at home and, and get paid. I am sorry. That ain't my life. Okay? If that's your life, good for you. I, I believe that everybody has the opportunity to pick and choose who they want to marry and what they want their relationship to be. That ain't my life. Okay? <laughs> That is not my life, okay? If we we'll move on, if you want to get you a man to sit at home while you work, you go right ahead, honey. Man don't work, don't eat around my house, honey. Man got to work. Uh, and not for me. <laughs> uh, like this video, please, and thank you. Yes, raised her, honey. Raised her into a woman. She didn't know how to be a woman until Sydney came, child. I, ooh, child, I need to be fully healed and uh fully a woman before a man comes into your life i'm just saying you don't know what anyway Woosa. uh click the link if you want to chime in on this situation i talked about a lot of things tonight we looked at nene leaks on uh the set of her new film we don't know what's gonna happen because we didn't see her but one time when she was getting on the plane we didn't see them, her when they crashed because we like did she die i don't know we're gonna have to watch it and find out we watched wendy williams documentary that's coming on at the end of the month the two-part documentary i feel like it's going to be great we watch kenya moore talking again yet again about how great this season is going to be it's going to be sweet 16 i guess it's going to be sweet 16 since candy got her peach snatched uh and uh we talked about you know monique and daddy and uh them create um clearing up some inaccuracies on club shay shay when monique said that uh that she said DL a cease and desist and DL said you was a big fat face of a lie and so now uh, Sydney that came to clarify and said that the lawyers did get involved but they didn't get to the part where a cease and desist was ever sent so now at least Monique taking accountability and telling y'all that some, some of the stuff she's saying is wrong but my thing is when you say something on such a big platform saying it on a smaller platform is not the same because you know how they say if you if you embarrass me in public don't apologize in private and I get it they did it in public but it's not the same audience it's not this like you're not already told a lie so all the people over there believe it but anywho my babies <laughs> Hold on, we got some people in the back. Hold on, hold on. Shout out to the squad. Oh, oh, I wanted to um 
I really wanted to go back too, but I'll do that tomorrow, child. Because I was going, I was in the uh, Monique versus Everybody playlist, and uh, back when she was showing everybody the letters between uh, her husband and Will Packer, and they was talking about how sassy. You know, people don't like when they call straight men sassy, but they were talking about how sassy her husband was in these emails to Will Packer around the time that the trailer broke, uh, blew up. This was like uh, five, six years ago. And uh, yeah, and so now the trailer situation is coming up again because she brought it up on uh, Club Shay Shay and she posted a picture of the trailer again on her social media. But we'll talk about that uh, probably on Patreon. Hold on, let me add these people up here. Hey, LaShawn, what's up, hey. what's up, what's up? Hey, Michelle. Hello guys, I got a question. And the thing is, Michelle, I almost didn't want to log in because I know it's either you're on one side or the other and -hmm. people are going to shoot you down if you're not on their side. Mm -hmm. One thing Monique and her husband kept on talking about the Breakfast Club apologize. Charlamagne, Mm -hmm. because I listened to the Breakfast Club, he only said that he apologized for being in her business. He should have minded his business. He did say that consistent that, mo- that she did sue Netflix and they settled, it was some validity to what she said. So mm-hmm. he said, but I did want to apologize for being in her business. I should have minded my own D business. His words, just hilarious. Yeah, she was sitting there, but you can also tell she was trying to be funny. That's the mm-hmm. tone she's going to bring to the radio show because She's from Baltimore, and so is uh, Monique. So, again, when they sit there and make the statement that anyone else sitting in that chair would have sat there and not said anything, well, that's because Angela, the last time when she was, Monique was on there, Angela Yee said how she heard she was difficult to work with. So, mm-hmm. again, that's why it just, it just allowed was just being funny. She was mm-hmm. just really adding sauce to it. She didn't bring any substance to it, other mm-hmm. than the fact that they are from Baltimore. And mm-hmm. I'm her, I'm her niece. I'm her baby. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing Jess Larry did. And like I said, yeah, because the know, little clip that I saw, I started just saying I wasn't here when it happened. Like, kind of yeah. like taking herself out of it. Yeah, being fun- she was being funny about the situation. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And then now one thing I will say, I don't know the interview that she's talking about with Tiff- Tiffany Haddish when Tiffany Haddish said if I wouldn't have a husband like that. But one point mm-hmm. Monique did make that I did think was true. Maybe if Tiffany Haddish did have a husband like him, she wouldn't have two DUIs. She wouldn't be accused for, you know, sitting there with that kid situation. But as I mean, that's as, a good listen. That's a good comeback. I get you got it, that you right. know, because you shoot at people, you know, at, at, at their downfalls or whatever, at, at things that they've done, the indiscretions. But yeah. at the same time, you don't think that's pick me ish? Like, you need a man to, to lead you in the ways that you should be led. You know, if you, if you, it, if you should have a man to teach you not to, to have a DUI. No, she needs, she might need a strong mother in her life, a strong woman in her life, a strong whatever, a strong mentor. It, why does it have to be a man? But in that, just who we expect her to be, though. So again, for Monique, Monique to sit there and say you need a man for this, that's just a given. She's gonna say okay. that. So again, okay. for her to say you need a man, but she need a man for everything. And when she sat there and brought up D.L. Hughley's daughter again, trauma. Even if let's say D.L. Hughley lied about that entire situation, for mm-hmm. you to bring it back up, the girls mm-hmm. to have to hear it again today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're bringing up this girl's past trauma. I didn't like that. I didn't like. And then she brought up the other daughter or something. She threw somebody. You know, don't he had two daughters? And she said, "Yeah, Dang. your other daughter." Blah blah. It's like you still talking. You still bringing up the kids, and then you throwing Corey Holcomb in there talking about earthquake son or whatever. Like you still talking. Why are you bringing up the children? I thought children was off limits. Let's yes. stop it right yes. here. Oh, so that's what I did. One question. If I was at work and everybody, at, most of the people in my job did not like me, most of the people, mm-hmm. is that not, is that not something wrong with me? Most of the people don't fool with Monique in their industry. And when she said that, saying that Tyler Perry wants to meet with her without her husband, because they didn't talk too much. 
sitting and talked too much. Tyler couldn't get in a word in. And even when he said that, say, I'm going to research what kind of money you should have made or you should have received from that show. It was to show her in Constance Vaughn's zone. He said, I'm going to research and find out how much money you should have made, and I'll give it to you. That was his way of saying, shut the hell up, Moni. I'll give it to you. We you shut up, you're you this money. And you know what they did? Well, how you going? How do you know what I'm supposed to get, uh, Tyler? They put shit up. The man said, that said, I'll give you the money. And then once he said it, that still wasn't good enough. Mm. I was like, shut the hell up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a fan. Well, I'm, I'm not. A, she she still didn't win me over. And when you sit there and say put sweet baby on in front of it, that means nothing to me. It's the sweet babies for me. Yeah. It's like everybody is the baby. Who is the yeah. adults? Where's the grown people? Where are the yeah. ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. <laughs> you know, my, what like, my you, like it's always and to me when you're talking to somebody else, you dumbing people down. You you talking to everybody as if they're children. Yes. My sweet baby. Baby. No, I'm not a child. Address yeah. me as the wrong person. Yeah, so. I agree with you. So again, because I did not want to call because the thing is, I know you're going to get slammed depending on what side. People are on your page slamming you mm -hmm. for having your opinion of the situation. I'm always going to get slammed. I'm used to it, but that's okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks for taking I my call. It. Thank you, LaShawn. Bye-bye. Uh, hey, let's Latoya, how you doing? Hey, Michelle, hey, hey. y'all, how you okay. doing? Okay, I'm doing well. Uh, I think it's more of the principle of the matter at this point mm -hmm. for a moment, and all of the situations when you have been made to be a fool and humiliated. I don't blame her for wanting her husband in the room because I need somebody to witness this. They've been making me out to be a liar all this time. And plus, that's her manager. And so why wouldn't he be able to sit in in a conversation? It's not like it's a, you know, even if it was a private meeting, but it was a like, I think some type of venue or something that he wanted her to come off, you know, while in the mix of everything. So, yeah, I'm not going to go in a room with another man. And that's still disrespectful to her husband slash manager that I'm going to step in the room with another man and close the door. You'll have an Evelyn situation. Uh, you know, when she tried to say Ashley husband called her in the room and made me feel uncomfortable. Like it's too much going on to be like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And when you know that this man has wronged you already then why would I step in the room with you by myself to get get gaslit? And DL is the one that brought it back up because had he not tried to take a slight towards her kids and come back around and then say, oh, but because of my daughter, like they wouldn't have to address it today on her live. So it's kind of like, you know, you're fighting fire with fire. And so you can't tell nobody if they want to put gasoline in the fire, though. Okay. And I do feel that it's not about Tyler Perry wanting to pay her for the Parker situation. He's not the one that did that. Those people need to write that wrong. He got his own situation that he needs to pay her for, for the lie, mm -hmm. saying that she was difficult to work with. So you can't put both my bags into one and feel like I did something for you. No, that's two separate issues. You handle what you did and sabotage and let me work over here because it's all in the pen and paper over here on the Parkers. I don't need you to pay me for that. Oh, so that's, okay. you know, that's just yeah. the way I look at it, you know, Um I And no, I'm giving every like I'm not gonna argue my point. Well, I've already said what my point is. I'm giving my callers a chance to say theirs, and we don't have to agree. Like y'all, no. like I'm sitting here and fight. Like I, I like no, I'm no, not. No. Like, it's not my battle. No, I'm talking to the chat. I'm sorry, Latoya. Oh, but it's I'm not sorry. my battle. Like everybody keeps saying, like I don't like Monique. I don't like Monique. It's not that I don't like her. I just don't like some of the things that she does and the way she handles things. That's my prerogative. Like it is what it is. Like other people may disagree, and they have the right to. So. And I also want to speak on um, her husband, Sydney. Um, okay. I don't know why people have a problem with her standing up for or 
even her having him as a manager and she has to pay him when Wendy Williams made that comment about Tabitha Brown retiring her husband and how she came back with the nice nasty that she's in the position that she's able to do so. He was a police officer. He's been taking care of our family for so long. Why not retire him? And so if Monique is in a situation to where, you know, she can kind of get her things in house, you know, at this point, but he had it started it. that way and ended that way. It's never been a situation where it was the other way around. But I mean, again, that's her marriage. I'm just on the outside looking in. They put it or they put it on the front stage and, and here we are critiquing it. I don't like I, just just me. I, I would do it. But there's that. Yeah, but I mean, you also you think of, you know, um, being able to travel. I mean, Candy and Todd, he might as well be on manager role, too, because he go everywhere with her. He ain't got no dog in the fight. You don't, think that Candy, you don't think that Candy is smart enough not to let all her money go through Todd? All her deals go through Todd? No, but what, I, allowed it to but what I will say is, um, what is it called? A 1099? He's probably... Um, filling out one of those going on those trips. Like she had to pay him for an appearance type situation. Like they're getting a tax right off of that. I'm sure she's using it in her favor if she's smart and we know she's smart. So he ain't just sitting at home doing daddy daycare. They recycling that money up in there, you know, okay. cause you get more tax return for a human than you do items or, you know, merchandise. So or clothes, you know, property, you get more of a tax write-off for an actual human being than you do anything else. So, okay. but all the other topics, Michelle, uh -huh. I know it's showing you got to make your money, but I don't care to talk about them. So that's all I want to speak <laughs> on. <with you. laughs> well, I appreciate you, Latoya. Thank you for all right, calling lady. All right. Bye-bye. Right. Hey, Kriya, how you doing? Kriya, hello. Hey, Michelle. Hey. How are you? I like your I'm lipstick. Good. It's pretty. Thank you so much. Um, I wanted to comment on Monique. I liked her interview okay. last I, I liked her interview last night with um with Shannon. And I thought uh -huh. it was real good. But today when I seen her video with her husband, I just thought it went real left. And um it it, it just kind of kind of got really crazy to me. So, I mean, you know, I thought she made some good points. I thought the interview was very, I thought it was very good until today. She lost. Me. Monique is a wonderful storyteller. Like every time she does an interview, she captivates, she draws you in. She remembers things. Or, or, like as far as we know, she remembers things, you know what I'm saying? But then today, like even her sitting with Sydney, she had, they admitted that, you know, one of the things that she said was incorrect. So we like, again, like I say this all the time about YouTube and YouTubers and everything else. We can't necessarily take everybody at their word. Like somebody can come on here and be like, I made a million dollars today and just be lying through their teeth. You know what I'm saying? And so some of the things that she says may be a bit questionable. And yeah, I believe that she deserves to be uh, compensated for some of the things that happened in the past. But at the end of the day, like demanding apologies and all of that, like you may never get the apology you're you're seeking. Now what? Right, but like you said, she's a good storyteller. Mm -hmm. But but baby, she need to get back to work because them acting skills was real real off today. It oh. was not the acting, all that crying and. Did you see she was crying and then less than a minute later they laughing. Yes, it it in in and, and the acting skills she needs to get back to acting. You know, mm -hmm. she's a good storyteller because she had me really, she had me last night and I really believed her last night. But after today, the craziness, the how she was acting with her husband and she needs to give up my babies and all that other kind of stuff like that. That, that's just that she needs to. And now she got it for the breakfast club and got it like, it's like, dang. <laughs> dang. Yeah. And I like Monique and I would, you know, I'm like Tyra. I was rooting for her. I was rooting for her, but she should have left that alone with uh that video with her and her husband today alone that just really came off really cuckoo to me that really I came the two odd birds sitting up there like weirdos yeah i think so, we i, I probably would have gave a little bit more respect if she just wouldn't have said nothing 
because that yes. beef with DL, like again, I'm like, you got bigger battles. Like DL ain't stopping no bags, right? No. You're going on tour with Cat Williams, you know, the thing with Oprah and Tyler. Okay, yeah, talk about that or whatever. But even with that, you you've said it time and time again. You gave us some more information about uh 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 Kevin Hart and all that. Like, why is you still nitpicking with these penny any beefs? The beef and, with and the breakfast. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Why DL. even why even acknowledge the Breakfast Club today? All that mm -hmm. that carried on too long about the Breakfast Club. And I don't I, that was just it, it was just too crazy for me. You know, her and her husband really appeared to be like something is wrong with both of them. You know, and I was and I really was uh, believing everything Monique said last night. And I was really in tune to what she was saying until today. And I was like, something wrong but with If you have life. some time, if you have some time, go, I have put the playlist in the description box. I think it's still there. It's Monique versus everybody. It's like all the videos I did like five years ago. And I literally need, need to watch it and catch up because she was arguing with Will Packer, with Oprah, with Lee Daniels, with Tyler Perry, with this person, with that, and with the Breakfast Club, you know, with, with, with Charlamagne. And so you, when you watch it, like there's some some receipts that she was dropping, like letters that Sydney was writing to, to producer Will Packer. And you read like the tone of the letter and this is supposed to be your manager. And he's saying these things in the letter. It's like, this is like, I don't know about this. No, so, yeah. I mean, it's just like you just have to like put all the pieces together and look at it and be like, um, yeah, it's something that. Yeah, right. they they them two them two together is they they some um cuckoo birds. But I and I'm not I, mad at him supporting her. I'm not. I, no, but I'm my not, thing I'm not. is, and I said this the other day. If you had a manager that was blocking your bag, that like people were weren't willing to work with you because of your manager, what would you do? You would get another manager just because this is her husband. Y'all act like he's like entitled to be her manager. He doesn't have to be her manager. He can be there as a supportive husband and still review the paperwork that the real manager goes gets and settles you know what i'm saying so that's just my opinion again i'm not in a marriage i'm just a commentator and i'm here to give my opinion and that is what my opinion is and uh to me the husband is blocking the bag not no tyler perry and nobody else but the husband is blocking the bag because he they just they you know Monique, she just, I really like Monique, but she just came off too weird today. That interview with her, her husband just really threw me off. But mm -hmm. I got one more thing to say, too. I know okay. Nene is your girl, but you're going to have to stop supporting all that old that old trash she's putting out. Stop it, Michelle. That's your girl. But that stuff is not. I was, looking, is at not, the list. I was that, looking at the Lifetime movie just like y'all. What's she talking about? That movie was trash. And you the, even the little. The little How movie, we know it's trash? It's not out yet. But it don't even look good, Michelle. Stop it. You need to and all you need to. I know Nene is your girl, but stop. Y'all say support black stop. women. Now it's like don't support a black woman. I understand you supporting the department, but don't be saying, "Ooh, this looking so good. This look like it's gonna be good." You know that thing <laughs> looking like it's gonna be good. Come it's on now. Opinion. It might be good. You oh. know, I love me a good trashy movie. <laughs> okay, Michelle. Okay. <laughs> It. it might be but, good. Who knows? I know. I know that's your girl, but stop that. Stop. I mean, we watch. Stop, listen, we've been watching Kids Get Hot the past on Peacock. We we, we got watching they trashy movie and Candy play the same role in every movie we yeah, watch. But, them. But, Why but, we but, take the But I I'm saying I'm not saying support. I'm not saying not supportive, but stop gassing it up like oh this is really good oh this oh look it yet, so i don't know if it's gonna be i'm good talking about in some of the, in, in some of the people in in the chat i'm talking about just because you say nini on a movie and here they come talking about oh it looking so good because it's everybody nini has star power everybody wants to see nini in the movie okay michelle but i'm gonna need you to stop gassing her up with all this everything she own ain't great you know, and it's not. We don't know that yet because it ain't there. College so it Hill. Might it might, college it might Hill. You don't college, know. College Hill and all that stuff. That stuff wasn't good. Come on. I mean, it, it was it was decent. Okay. All right. Now I'm gonna let you I'm gonna let I'm gonna get off your girl. But um <laughs> but it was have, more people in college hill than just Nene, Amber I Rose. Know, but, yeah, no, but don't nobody did. don't nobody want to see none of that no more. That's Ray J and Lamar Odom, it was good. Who? To me. Who? Ray J and Lamar Who's Odom that? was on. Who is Ray J and Lamar Odom? You don't know who Ray J is? I've never heard of him. 
Brandy, little brother. He said, if that? I had one. Missy, I'm being, I'm being funny. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but yeah, but that's all I have to say, Michelle. Well, I appreciate you so very much. Thank you for calling. All right. I love you. I love you for <laughs> Okay. Bye-bye. D Ramsey. Oh my God. D Ramsey. <laughs> What's up, Michelle? AT Hey. <laughs> How you doing, Lotus Flower friend? Did I go off? I can't hear you. You can't hear me? Hold on. Oh, now uh, I can hear you. Now I can hear you. Okay. I'm in my vehicle. Okay. okay. I want to chime in about the Monique interview. It has taken okay. me all day to get through it. First of all, it was so cringy. And, I didn't you know, know. Let, let me be in a moment of transparency. What? I talked about this yesterday. I didn't watch the whole thing. I watched like the first hour. It's like three hours, right? Girl. Girl, it took me. Oh, uh, okay. Especially if you've already been down this road with fucking Monique, y'all. We've been here with Monique. Okay, so let's 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 dice this up for just for a moment, okay? Okay. What is Monique's argument and beef and gripe about? Okay, we know that what happened with Precious and all of that. But what it sounds like is that she's calling all of these people again to the forefront and saying hey these are crooks and they did me dirty and they've got ill-gotten gains yet she wants to be paid by the crooks for their ill-gotten gains for hypothetical hypothetical money that she <laughs> says she would have made if somebody had not said something girl i am I, what do you think about the over being I'm jealous like, part Girl, listen, listen, it's beyond that for me. I, I'll be really with her. I'll be with her following her train of thought. And But even, okay, so the D.L. Hughley thing. Uh -huh. I had to go and see what was the beef about. I saw D.L. Hughley call her a liar and say she lied and da-da-da-da-da. So then I had to go find that part of the clip. She was defending her daddy husband over a game that is why she was upset with dl hughley when uh they said she would drag tiffany haddish i said oh what'd she say about tiffany haddish bitch let me go find out what she drug tiffany haddish for she did not drag tiffany haddish for being a buffoon no 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 she drugged tiffany haddish for saying something about daddy husband again and and then she told the story of these people being friends since they were 10th grade and she becomes rich and famous and this nigga comes to LA and then convinces her <laughs> to pay him to be her manager <laughs> and marry him and it be an open relationship so he can get sexual satisfaction somewhere else. Bitch, that's high wizardry right there. <laughs> What the fuck? Ooh. Sydney needs an Oscar, bitch. He needs an EGOT. God damn it. Everywhere she goes, it boils down. Tempo. It boils down to Monique defending her husband as her manager. Every argument she is having is rooted in that. And I don't care what anybody says. Nobody needs to sit up and talk about their fucking spouse and hold them up so goddamn high unless they were so fucking fragile. You mean to tell me Monique is out here acting like she's the only woman in the whole goddamn world with a black man, but her black man is special nigga king black man, bitch. Are you insane? Monique sounds crazy out here, my, and everybody with a problem because my black man is standing so proud with me. My black man, my king. Girl, <laughs> this nigga has pulled the wool over your eyes. Monique said that she did not have the emotional intelligence at the time and she was traumatized so severely that she was in therapy 
receiving help and that the man who also I'm sure has read the pimp books and can look and tell she's all the way outside of her mind. Her best friend says, oh, <laughs> I can help you. <laughs> I'm Dr. Dingley. And you're going to pay me 10, maybe 15% of all your wealth for the pleasure. Mm. It all boils down to this man, her refusing to listen to anybody else. You mean to tell me this man has convinced her that he is the head of her goddamn household, even though she bought the motherfucking house with all of her earnings? I want to know what is it this man can do for her financially, period, outside of her. What is it that he can do for her outside of her? And she doesn't want to hear everybody around her say, girl, you got a whole succubus on you. You got a big neck attached to your ass. That's why Tyler Ooh. Perry's... Uh, predatory ass okay probably wanted to pull her coattail and go uh girl you know how we get down out here you need to get uh, a, 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 a a manager to look like these other people like everybody else because we all out here are what highly paid sellouts every one of us mm. i don't know why everybody acting like they're not they're all highly paid sellouts getting paid to show semblance of power semblances of an existence so that we, the non-knowing public, will buy the ticket to go buy the shit and make everybody rich. Oh, Monique doesn't get off the hook for fucking portraying that role in Precious that she got an Academy Award for the, showing the most degraded underbelly of an imagined black life of a black woman. Are y'all insane? But I she wants to weaponize yesterday. black womanhood and rally us? So does she, so to her and her nigga ass daddy husband don't get to live fat off the hogs, off the crumbs that these motherfucking wizards are out here creating these fantasies for the mind of the black people to fuck with us. And she's mad because she doesn't get her cut because they want to cut this nigga out. No, they don't want that nigga for whatever reason, Monique, they don't want him. And everybody's been telling her that we don't want to do business with him. And she's like, but he's my man. He's my man. He's my king. Girl, then let him be your king, your God there. Why does he also got to be the fucking manager? Bitch, somebody's That's trying right. to give you a check for $10 million, but they don't want to talk to this nigga, but you can't hear that? Because you so digmatized? Mm. Bitch, no. You show me where this man benefits Monique and show me where Monique stands on her own square, where she's done her own internal work to get her own healing done. I'm not saying ain't bad shit happen to Monique. Yes, but bitch, do your own internal work. You have leaned on this man and now you become a fucking mental imbecile. We've watched this woman digress, regress, She's not standing as some 56-year-old woman. She stood up there and looked so goddamn crazy talking to Shannon Sharp and then towards the end, come on home, daddy. You need an older woman to cook a pound cake. Go cook a pound cake naked for you. Come on home, Shannon Sharp. Come on, just a cooning and shit. Her and that mm. man, they are not goals. For whom? Hmm. Monique is not a role model to look up to anymore. She was at one point, bitch, and then she did Precious, okay? Oh. Okay. Precious took her off the throne. Did you see Precious? Did you see the role? Yeah. Did you see the... Yeah. I am, I am yeah. mentally yeah. scarred from that shit. I wish I could take it from my psyche. I am too. But when black people... Since she, she want to pull the black card, since these minstrels, since these black face coon ass highly paid niggas step and fetching every motherfucking one of them they're getting paid to play the game and then you mad bitch where's this nigga christian wales he came out here and played in your faces as well he came and played in your faces as well <laughs> He mm -hmm. said, oh, there's a billionaire predator and oh, he's doing me so wrong. And then the nigga shut down when he got that check. That nigga, it, every, all these niggas out here are willing to give it up for a check.
and Monique is the same. <laughs> she's the same. She shut the fuck up. Didn't she just say she settled with Netflix? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. She's out here yeah. arguing for a piece of the crumbs of the pot of the table. Yeah. Girl, shut up. That's the way I feel. And 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 I girl, I didn't I didn't even know she did a video with her husband because I can't watch them. The lady before <laughs> said how creepy that is. Girl, years ago, I said, Oh fuck no. Oh bitch, we was trying to tell Monique's ass to get out before the get out movie came out, bitch. When we saw her ass sitting up there in that wood paneling, looking like her and goddamn. Sydney or captive bitch. No. I remember. No, ma'am. No, sir. I remember when she used to be and on this Paris woman sitting on the couch called it herself a whore. Did you did you catch that shit? She's saying that her prior sexual life prior to this motherfucker was whorish. Listen at the way this woman describes her life prior to this man. That before mm. him, she was whorish. Before him, she didn't have any emotional intelligence. Before him, she didn't have any special, uh, any spiritual grounding within her own fucking soul. But he made it all. Bitch, that's codependency. That ain't correct. Who told you to do that on the planet? And you a whole superstar? Girl. So, no. I have not seen that. Michelle, I'm almost scared to watch it, girl. I'm almost scared. Based on what the lady before me said, I'm almost scared to watch it. But now I got to. Yeah, go, yeah. Look at it and see, child, because it's a mess. I don't, I'm just over it. I don't know what to say about Monique anymore. I, I be trying to low-key support her because, you know, like two things can be true at the same time. She can be unfairly treated, you know, because of who Correct. she is, because of being a fat black woman and all the things that she keeps trying to push. But at the same time, it, it could be that, you know, you, you're you really problematic. Your husband is really hindering you from doing certain things. That could be true as well. So I just don't, it's, it's just not one-sided to me. Michelle, the lady yeah. sat up there talking about how she was not going to fucking audition for shit. T I am from Los Angeles. I'm a former stand-up comedian. I've been in New York. I have done the rounds. What the fuck is she talking about? Bitch, who does that? Who says that? <laughs> I'm not going to audition? Bitch, just because you got to LA and lucked up and hit a lick on a sitcom within 90 days, whore, you're running around Los motherfucking Angeles telling niggas you're not going to audition for roles? Bitch, go shave your legs and sit the fuck down. Okay. No, ma'am. <laughs> no, ma'am. Girl, because I remember the, the, the night she won the Academy with the goddamn... Anyway, bitch, listen, Monique been out of pocket for years. <laughs> she been uh, on some bullshit for years. <laughs> and she's well. sitting up here talking this shit like, nigga, I'm almost 56 as well, bitch. I remember. I used to open for Monique. I've opened up. I've done shows in place of Monique. Back oh. in the day, day before she went to LA and, and got famous with the Parkers, but it's like that's not my point. My point <laughs> is, when she had her show, Monique did uh -huh. not have the best motherfucking reputation. She can stop that lying. Mm. People talked about how crazy her and her husband was with them goddamn demands, mm. and what an egomaniac she was. Oh, come on, stop it, stop, stop, bitch. Yeah. I remember being a manager. Uh, I, I used to be a, a finance manager. And I remember making a whole more money than I'd ever seen. And I remember me being a heady bitch. You couldn't tell me shit, bitch. Okay. And I'm a Leo too. So I had all my arrogant shit all the way up. So I couldn't hey, imagine. Leo. Okay. That's why you're so loyal. <laughs> that, but that's why I can't. That's why you're loyal to Nina, even though that lady said, girl, don't be hyping us about the trash movie. I start cracking up. <laughs> <laughs> right, I said she a Leo girl. She gonna hold on to who she right, girl. Shit, I got problematic I friends. Like I don't girl. like. You know how I go. <laughs> I got plenty of problematic friends. I like who I like, bitch. But this mm -hmm. thing though, anyway, Monique is problematic, y'all. Her saying she's not see because all these things, like you said, Michelle, can be true. You can be having these unfair treatments occurring with you yes however you can also exasperate that behavior because you then too have a manager who's problematic people don't like him hollywood is all about relationships period she can call them gatekeepers what the fuck ever when people don't like you bitch then they don't like you 
And if me liking you in a business where that if I like you, I'm going to put millions of dollars in your pocket, bitch, but then I don't like you, guess what I'm going to make sure I don't do? Bitch, make sure I, you don't get millions of dollars. <laughs> what is she not understanding if the common denominator is daddy husband manager? And yet she everywhere like, she goes. Right, and go independent and start doing Patreon and, and, she and videos keeps on YouTube. saying, Michelle, she keeps saying that everybody's opposed only because she's a black woman standing in truth with her black king, God, daddy, husband. <laughs> That's what she keeps saying. Right. So he must be the motherfucking issue. Yes or no? Is it me? Y'all Clearly, that's what everyone's been saying, but you know, for years, <laughs> I say it, it's like you ain't got no husband. How would you know? Right, I, girl. If that's the husband what? I gotta have, I will stay single. I ain't paying no. She man can keep her me. husband. Nobody told this woman not to keep her husband. But again, this is how you know that it is Stockholm syndrome, bitch. Blink, Monique, keep the husband. Uh, we as a industry do not like the person who's managing you we don't like them we want someone else that we would like to do business with <laughs> what's why why can't she grasp that i'm gonna tell you why because he's pumped her ass so full of seminal fluid and he has pimped out her whole entire mind this woman is actually sitting up defending a whole hobosexual Not a homosexual, Lord. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, y'all. Thank you, Michelle. Girl, I just had to get well, my Thank you so out. much. Y'all go support D Rams, the AKA Lotus thank Flower. You. On her channel. Thank you, Michelle. Girl. I'm about to watch that Appreciate shit. I'm about to watch it. it. I love y'all. Bye. <laughs> All right. Bye. Oh, GG. Ciao. What is up? Hey, Michelle. How are you? That was a hard act to follow. What's going on? I, I, I'm telling you. <laughs> To me, got she, she 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 came off as a um as a hater and as a envious. Oh, envious? Why? Because if you say you used to do stand up comedy the same with Monique, you used to open for Monique and stuff like that, and you know you downplay her her getting the Parkers, regardless if it was three months, four months, five months, six months, and stuff, where she got the role. And it did make sense when she said that when Oprah hand, said, I handpicked these people, that's the point that she was making, I handpicked uh -huh. these people, but they end up going for, uh, um, what is it called? audition right uh -huh. Uh -huh. and she said that's when they get you because how you handpick me for something and then all of a sudden now I have to do an audition so once you do an audition it basically downgrade your your profile mm -hmm. so to me, because you put in the pot with everybody else instead of being handpicked, and you don't have to. Is that what you're saying? Well, when Oprah said that she handpicked everybody as well as uh -huh. Chahaji and stuff like that, right? So when Monique stated that, how you handpick every single one of them for your cast, but they have to audition. And when she stated that, oh, when I got the position for Parker's I didn't have to audition because that role was already made for me so if there's a role uh -huh. that I see that somebody mm, I know who to call I'm going to call Michelle for the role uh -huh. I handpicked you so therefore you should be compensated because of the simple fact that I handpicked you for the role but the moment that you have to go for an audition it's like your value become lower. That's what she was saying. Uh, now, okay. I say go that. Ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. So now I do agree with Latoya that the woman that spoke earlier, the thing is, I don't think people have issues with her husband 
because of the simple fact he's either problematic or anything like that. I think they have an issue with her husband because you're not able to do to me what you would do to somebody else that don't have nobody that stands besides them. And that's what Hollywood does. Mm. Okay. So to me, but you don't see is. you don't see stars like Jada Pinkett, like Will ain't gotta speak for her. You don't see stars like Gabrielle Union, her husband don't have to speak for her. Like I'm just saying in general, I understand your man being supportive, but your man does not have to be your manager. And that's my opinion. I I, I get that as well. I understand. I could see I could see both sides. You know, uh -huh. I could see her side as far as who was her manager prior? It was her brother. Oh. And the moment that she received an Oscar, her brother, and well, she was going to receive an Oscar, her brother, and the one that molested her, well, sorry, I, I said that word, but the one that did the act to her, they was calling around talk shows for them to get on the TV show so that way they could talk about her. And her trauma. Mm. So that. she decided to go with her husband. That's not somebody that she knew. Like, oh, we met. And I'm so digmatized, like the woman said. And I'm just going to be with him. No, that's somebody she knew since she was, they were in the 10th grade. So they have okay. history with each other. Sometimes a person could go through trauma. And you don't know how to get out of what happened to you throughout your life. And God sent somebody to you to help you. And that's basically what she's saying. This man is her everything because he bring out the better side of me. He helped me when I was down. He helped me when I was in the dark. He helped me when I didn't feel good about myself. So who are we? to say that is not her king who are we to say that's not the person you know people don't want nobody don't said like that's not her king nobody said that i'm just saying in general you ain't got to pay nobody to support you and i'm gonna leave it at that i i feel you on that one i feel you on that one but at the end of the day mm -hmm. a job is a job okay so if i'm with my partner and i have a business and I meet my partner while I'm in my business. And I may have met my partner like they came for a job. And my partner ended up getting a job at my uh -huh. business. Am I going to say, oh, now that we are together, you know, you need not to be in my business. You need not to work how you've been working. Why? Why can't we win together? Why can't we make money together? Whether it's whatever position that it holds. But see, if it's a, you have momagers, you have all type of different managers that are in relationship with the person that they are managing. It's us Black people that always see an issue when a Black woman have somebody we talk about why the black man don't want to be with the black woman why the black man don't want to stand behind the black woman but when we see somebody that does have somebody that is black and have her back we find something wrong with the issue we find something wrong with that I, I think you're conflating it because i don't see anything wrong with a husband supporting a wife I just said I'm not gonna pay for your support. That's it. I get I get you. I got you on that. I don't one. like that part of it. You know what I mean? But otherwise, you know, the, all the money coming into the family, I get it. You know, husbands and wives, you know, family businesses, it, it happens all the time. But yeah, it's just I don't know. Anyway, we no, go I around and around. We've been I talking really, about the same I really, thing. I really, wow. I really... Go ahead. I'm, I'm over it. I'm over it too. Cause when I heard she had another video, I was like, okay, we go here. We go again. We gonna talk about the same shit about Oprah and Tyler Perry. Hopefully, I won't have to talk about this tomorrow. I was like, oh, okay. I'll buy something else. When I watched it, you know, 
I learned a lot, you know, and to me, it's not even about the money. The lady mm -hmm. just a while ago said, oh, she want the money from this cook or whatever the case may be. It's not about the money. It's the mm -hmm. principle. You went around and basically spread my name through the industry as a person that is difficult to work with. And already, we don't even get paid as much as our white, you know, workers. We don't get paid as much. That's true. That's true. In every in every area, that's true. The same way I, you, you know, no one said that her arguments are invalid. No one said that. Oh, so, anyway. Well, you just said she's a great storyteller. By saying that, that you know, people people could take <laughs> it, you know, it, it could be 50-50, you know. You could say, you know, she's a great storyteller. You know, once you say- but I don't, but see, from my job, the where I sit, because I'm a blogger and because I know that people skew stories all the time, I just don't take people at their word because I know people come online and say anything and people run with it as if it's fact. It's not always fact. So that, that is just true. because she says it does not mean it's so. You know what I mean? Like, okay, there may be some truth to it, but there's a whole nother story over there that we haven't heard. We haven't heard Oprah side. Oprah don't talk about it. Tyler, Oprah, we haven't Oprah, heard his Oprah side. Oprah ain't going to talk about it. Yeah, that's the point. So Tyler we've Penny only heard her side. So it. we just going to believe her just because she say it's true? Well, to me, it's like with the whole Cat William, you know, Nobody yet had came out and said, he's lying. I haven't heard nobody say that she's lying except for DL, and I wish I can't even stand him because he always talking shit. So he's irrelevant to me. But nobody but says she's lying. Note, this stream is going way too long, child. But uh, <laughs> I appreciate you for calling, Gigi. And, and thank you, okay. thank you. Blessing to you and your mom. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you no so problem. much. I'm sure she appreciates it too. All right. Have a blessed night. All right. You too. Bye. I know it's some people in the bed. I'm not taking no more calls. Look, I have talked about this for two hours. We done ran Monique and Sydney into the ground. Y'all mad at me. Y'all not mad at me. Some of y'all agree with me. Some of y'all don't agree with me. It is what it is. It ain't my marriage. It's her marriage. And like I said before, I am not going to pay nobody. <laughs> to support me okay you can say that's why i'm single then so be it I, ain't no man getting my money okay ain't no man getting my money man don't work don't eat you need to come already healed not come to him already healed but anyway and i don't need no man teaching me how to be no woman um moving on like this video please and thank you if you're just getting here please rewind and uh watch the full entire two hour stream we had several topics at the top of the uh out hour, two hours we talked about nene leaks her new um lifetime movie that she's in we reviewed it we reviewed wendy williams uh situation her documentary we talked about kenya moore's uh page six interview uh what else we talked about we talked about monique we talked about a lot of things so don't forget to uh like and let me know what you think about everything we talked about you know um in the comment section and i will see you guys in the next live stream thanks for watching squad Good night. Y'all know I ain't got no money. I'm not she rich. Very like, rich honey. I'm not rich this like you. She's a very rich. <laughs> she been in being the way before I was in being. Okay. No, we came yeah. in business. Right. No, -uh. I been was in business. 20, 20, 2007. You've been in business. That's true. I've been in business. She's a very rich bitch. Oh, well, she's just a bitch. <laughs> oh my God, I am not. She's not. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Oh. Wait. No, what okay. you want to say? Here we go. Hey, I'm Dr. Heavenly, and this is straight from the A. Hey, what's up, y'all? I am your girl, Candy. Hanging out with Straight from the A. You know, I love you guys. I always visit the site. <laughs> this is Tyler Perry, and if you want the truth, a lot of blogs don't tell the truth. StraightfromtheA.com. That's what you check out. And you love us, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go.